door. That's okay. Yeah, whatever it was, it's not as bad as what I just did. Oh, what just happened? I had a 4.30 session online, and I fell asleep on the couch, and the guy calls me at 4.45, are we having a session today? Oh, no. The worst part was that it was calculus, which is relatively hard, and so I'm sitting there trying to do calculus when I'm still waking up half grown. Oh. So I told him Dang. I'd give him the rest of his session at 7.45 tonight, so... Um, so what do you and I have going tonight? Is it stuff you can um, We watch? are still reviewing the logarithmic, raw, logarithmic function. Sorry, that's a hard word. Logarithmic, logarithmic. logarithmic function. Yeah. Logarithmic. Okay. Logarithmic. Yeah. Logarithmic. Functions and the exponential functions. Okay. So what kind of problems do you have? Um, so evaluate without using a calculator. Okay. It is log 3 log base 3 log base log base 3 sorry yeah log base 3 to the 1 ninth log base 3 of yeah, one ninth? Ninth. yeah of 1 ninth sorry like that in other words i call that the argument I'm not sure mm -hmm. what your teacher calls it but if I'm going to say y equals log base 3 of 1 ninth. Of 1 ninth? Okay. Okay. Then what that means is that 3 to the y, which is my answer, y, has to equal 1 ninth. Well, okay. what is y? Um, y would have to equal negative. Is it negative 2? Yeah, negative 2. 3 to the minus 2 equals 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 ninth. Okay. Okay. Cool. What else? Now, um, back up a step. Um, I've always found it easier when you have a problem like this to, to go ahead and make up the variable. In other words, what I would normally do here is probably say, let's let that equal to x. And now I can convert that to an exponential equation. I have 3 to the x equals 1 ninth, and I can solve it easily. If, okay. if you don't let it equal a variable, it actually gets a little different. In other words, if I'm so used to being able to put this in exponential equation that I can do it, but I need that variable. In other words, I need it to be equal to some unknown then okay. I can take and put that into exponential expression. It's the number on the far left raised to the power of that on the far right equals the argument. Okay. So I do find it easier to actually make up a variable and insert it here. I'm not saying you have to do that, but I No, think yeah, I think, I think it does make it easy. Yeah. All right, what else? Okay, the next one's kind of easy, but I'm just, I just kind of want to check my math on this one. Okay. So it's natural log of e to the third cubed. So, yeah, natural log of e to the, no, not one-third, is cubed, sorry. So natural log of e cubed. Okay. And so what I said, the answer was this, was three. Yeah, it's, first of all, I'm going to bring that three down in front. Like that. Okay. And then that is 1. Okay. Anything, in other words, the log base b of b is always 1, no matter what b is. And in this case, we have the log base e, that's natural log, of e. So that has to be 1. Okay. Huh. Okay. Okay, the next one is um, log base x of one eighth equals three. Three? Yeah. Okay. Put this in exponential format. It equals x cubed equals one eighth. Now solve it. Um, 
XB. Ooh, hold on a minute. I don't, I don't know. Well, how do you solve that equation? Let's take the cube um, root of both sides. Yeah. Well, if I take the cube root of the left side, I get X. If I take the cube root of the right side, I get the cube root of 1 eighth. And the cube root of 1 eighth is the cube root of 1 over the cube root of 8. <laughs> Cube okay. root of 1 is 1, cube root of 8 is 2. Here's your answer. x to the 1 half base of 1 eighth equals 3. And what that basically would mean would be 1 half to the 3 power should equal 1 eighth, and it does. Okay. So the real key in all of these is being able to translate between logarithmic and exponential expressions. Whenever they say you can't use a calculator, that's what you want to do. You just want to, if it's a log expression, switch it to an exponential. If it's an exponential, switch it to log. Okay. Okay. The next one is, this is where it kind of gets harder. Okay. Um, 2 log base 3 of x plus 4 minus log base 3 of 9 equals 2. Okay. Well, we can do this two different ways. We can do it as a compression problem, where we would take that and compress it to a single log function. And I would be really tempted to do that, but in this case, I can kind of see a shortcut. We don't have to do it that way. What's log base 3 of 9 equal to? Um log base 3 of 9, 9 of log base 3? No, it's equal to 2. In other two words, two. if I'm trying to solve just that, there's no variables there, so I would be trying to solve 3 to the x equals 9. x is 2. Okay. Okay. So that number, rather than apply the rules of logs, let's just subtract 2. And then add 2 to both sides. So now I have 2 log base 3 of x plus 4 equals 4. Correct? Okay. Yeah. Now divide both sides by 2. Okay. That's equal to 2. And now I think I see where this is going. And now use your exponential conversion. What's the next thing? Um, you would do 3 squared equals x plus 4, and then 9, nine equals, equals x plus, plus four, 4, subtract 4, x equals 5. x equals 5. And the only thing okay. you want to do is check and make sure you don't violate any domains. And x, that does not. In other words, if okay. x is 5, you can still take the log of a positive number. Remember, you can never take the log of a negative number, and you can never take the log of zero. And sometimes okay. you end up with a quadratic. Now, I don't know if it's worth doing here, because this one was a little strange, but I could use the, let's use the rules of logs here. Instead of deciding what that is, Let's start by taking that 2 and putting it up there. And then, since I've got the log minus the log, that if I put that in a single log expression, it would be x plus 4 squared in the numerator, and in the denominator it would be 9. Okay. All of that has to equal 2. Okay. Which means 3 squared 
equals x plus 4 quantity squared over 9. And now you can take the square root of both sides of that equation and you get 3 equals x plus 4 over 3. x plus 4 equals 9. x equals 5. So you can get to the same solution even if we didn't really know what that was. Okay. Now some of these log expressions, you have to work with them for a while before you recognize that's instantly 2. Okay. And the easiest way to do the problem is to make that 2. But um, you could, even if you didn't know that was 2, you could do it by condensing first. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, the next one is 3 log base 2 of x equals negative log base 2 of 27. Okay, so let's do this. Um, if I bring the 3 to the top, in other words, if on the left I make that 3 an exponent. Yeah. That's the same on the left. Yeah. Believe it or not, I can make that negative sign an exponent also. Can you get negative 1? Yeah. In other words, that's 27 to the negative 1. Okay. Now we have the log base 2 of this quantity equals the log base 2 of that quantity. So I can basically think of this as dividing both sides by log base 2, but what I'm really doing is equating the arguments. So x cubed equals, well, what's 27 to the negative 1? It's equal to that. Okay. I take the cube root of both sides, and you get x equals one third. Okay. And okay. again, with this problem, there's various ways to do it. I could move this log to the left, and then use the log, the rule of logs, to make a single log expression and have it equal to zero and then go from there. But uh, again, if you see a way that's an easier way to do one of these log problems, you always want to do it the easiest way. Okay. What else? Um, the next one is, I'm just kind of like, now I'm just bouncing around the problems yeah, I'm going to do to see what fine. problems I need to work with. I wanted to check one last thing that I didn't violate any domains with that answer, and I don't. X can be one-third. Okay. Okay, the next one is expand uh, the logarith logarithmic function expression. <laughs> um, it is log base 5 of the cube root of x squared plus 1 um, divided by x squared minus 1. We're supposed to evaluate that? Or is it equal to something? Uh, it says expand it. Oh, just expand it. Okay. Well, the first thing you want to do when you're expanding anything is to get rid of your radical signs. Let's change okay. that cube root to an exponent of one-third. Okay. okay. 
Now that's going to be the log base 5 of x squared plus 1 to the 1 third minus the log base 5 of x squared minus 1. Okay. And then the and only thing left to expand it is to move that 1 third down in front. Okay. And that's part of the expansion process. Okay. Okay. But you can't move the 2 down in front or anything? Uh, from the x squared minus 1? Yeah. No. That 2 is inside the parentheses. If it were outside the parentheses, I could. But it's inside the parentheses. Now, I could do something else to this if I wanted to uh, expand a little bit more. Notice that x squared minus 1 is x minus 1 times x plus 1. So yeah. Change that. Let's call that x minus 1 times x plus 1. And then, because I have the log of a product, I can't do anything with this part here that's x squared plus 1, because that doesn't factor. Okay. Is it is it 1 third, or how would you get 1 half? Excuse me, 1 third. Okay. And then, I'm going to do uh, pluses here. In other words, I'm going to do minus the log base 5 of x minus 1 uh, plus the log base 5 of x plus 1. Okay. And now, when I remove those brackets, the second log becomes negative. So I'm going to remove the brackets, put a negative sign there. You see what I'm doing? Yeah. Okay. And let's see. No. Wait, I'm just a little confused on why. Why does it become negative when you remove the brackets? Well, because what I had was this. In other words, these two things have to be added because they're being multiplied. Yeah. But okay. when I remove the brackets, that negative sign, because this is all in the denominator, then okay. I have to subtract, change that plus sign to a negative sign after removing the brackets. Oh, okay. Okay, and the only thing I was wondering was whether or not I could condense it further because I do have an x squared plus 1 over here and an x plus 1 there. Well, actually, I, I have a key, too, by the way. She just uh, uh, expands it to 1 third log base 5 x squared plus 1 minus uh, log base 5, x squared minus 1. Okay, so she doesn't separate the x squared minus 1. Because no. that does factor into x minus 1 times x plus 1, and then, of course, that expands to two different log expressions. So yeah. fully expanded is really that. But she, okay. she partially expanded it, which is fine. In other words, her answer was this here, if I multiply those two together now, and I just end up with x squared minus 1, like that. Yeah. So her answer is this part here. Uh-huh. All right. That's fine. I think some okay. of that is just uh, preference as to how far you want to expand it or how much you want to expand it. That's not, true. That's not really mathematically defined. That's more of a preference. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one. Give an answer. Do you want to give an answer as x squared minus 1, or do you want to give it as x minus 1 times x plus 1? It's Probably x minus that 1. That kind of reference one. thing. So. Yeah. Okay. Right. What else? The, the next one's uh, solve the equation. Okay. 
and it is 3x equals 14. I actually think this one, I think I can do this one. Or three, three, sorry, three um, to the x power. Three to the x power equals 14? Yeah. How do you do this one? Um, would you take... Uh, I just got to think of it. Log base 14 of 3 equals x? Well, the way to solve this is to take the log of both sides. Okay. Okay. Which base you use doesn't really matter. Yes, you might think that I should take the log base 3 of both sides. That would be a reasonable assumption because that immediately gets the left side to x. But then I've got this thing here that I can't get out of my calculator without the change of base. So the change of base formula means that's the log of 14 over the log of 3. Okay. However, let me go back a step. My experience is that you're just as well off always using natural log or common log. Natural log is the language of calculus. So if you're going on to calculus, you might as well get used to using natural log right now. Okay. okay. When I take the natural log of both sides, what I get is x natural log of 3 equals natural log of 14, right? Yeah. So x is equal to the natural log of 14 divided by the natural log of 3. Believe it or not, that ratio is the same as that ratio. Okay. And it's the same as log base 117 of 14 divided by log base 117 of 3. In other words, okay. all of these log ratios are the same regardless of their bases. It's kind of okay. astounding that those two are equal. One is common log and the other is natural log, and they're both equal to this one, log base 117. Oh. Which means okay. that we really did not save a step by taking the log base 3 like we did the first time. Okay. In other words, when I took the log base 3 of both sides, it definitely got the left side down to x immediately, but then it left me something on the right side that required me to use the change of base formula. So it's actually easier if you take the natural log or the common log of both sides, in my opinion. And then you don't have to worry about whether you want to take log base 3 or log base 14 or any of those. Just whenever you have an exponential equation like 3 to the x equals 14, just take the natural log of both sides and then solve. Okay. You get the same answer as you would have if you'd have taken the, the log base 3 of both sides. And same number of steps. Okay. Okay. The next one is e to the x plus 3 power oh, equals pi to the x power. What's the first step? Um, putting natural log in front of each. Taking the natural log of both, both sides of the equation. Taking I'm natural, take log, the natural of log of that side, and I'm going to take the natural log of that side. Well, okay. natural log is perfect here, because when I take the natural log of e to any exponent, I get the exponent. Because notice, I could put that x plus 3 in front, and then I have x plus 3 times the natural log of e, which is 1. So that's always equal to the exponent. Over okay. here, I can take the x, put it in front, 
natural log of pi. Well, natural log of pi is just a number. So if I put all my terms with x on the left side, and I get that. Okay. Now I factor out an x. Hold on a minute. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. I can't factor out an x. I got to put the three on the other side. So I get yeah. x minus x natural log of pi equals minus three. And then I can factor out the x. So I get x times one minus natural log of pi equals minus three. So x equals minus 3 divided by 1 minus natural log of pi. And I can get that number off of a calculator. Okay. One of the, the key realizations when you're dealing with logs is that they are just numbers. If I have the log of a number, that's a number. It's, that's not a variable. That's a number. Okay. Okay, and that's what she has on her key, too, so that's correct. Yeah, that, that's probably the best answer because if I figure out what the natural log of pi is, then i got to round it off because it's going to give me an irrational number, and then i got to subtract it from 1, and I end up with an approximate answer. This is an exact answer. Okay. You always want okay. exact answers if you can, if you're talking about it from a, a theoretical math position. You know, if you're building a bridge and you, you got to know the mm -hmm. length of the arch, different story. Then you have to round it off to some number, to some number of decimal places. But if you're just giving a perfect math answer, you don't usually convert pies or natural logs to numbers. Okay. Okay, all right, the next one is, it's a solve for x, and it's natural log of e to the 3 minus x power equals 8, but she put parentheses around the e to the 3 minus x power. I don't know why. Like this? Yeah. All right. I'm not sure why either. What is natural log of e to the 3 minus x power equal to? Uh, 3 minus x. Yeah. So 3 minus x equals 8, and then that's just an algebraic function. So x equals minus 5. Exactly. Once okay. you can convert these log, once you can convert an exponential function to an algebraic function, then you can solve it using algebra. As okay. long as the exponent is a variable, you can't solve it using algebra. In other words, if I go back to the original equation you gave me, there's no algebraic solution for that. If I don't have a log table or a calculator, I have no idea what x would be. Okay. There's no way to solve it algebraically. So you have to use logs to solve this. Okay. Okay, the next one is natural log of the natural log of x uh, equals 2. Okay. Here we mm -hmm. have a log equation. Let's try to solve it by converting it to an exponential equation. So what's the okay. step? If I'm converting this entire thing to an exponential equation, what's the next thing I can write? Um, e squared equals natural log of x. Okay. Now keep going. Um, 
Is it doesn't e already the natural log? Well, the way I convert this to an exponential expression is I take its base, raise it to this, it's equal to x. So in other words, e to the e squared equals x. And uh, again, that's just a number. Okay. That you can get out of your calculator. In other words, this is a two-step. This converts it to exponential the first time. And then this converts it to exponential a second time. Okay. So just keep going until you have x all by itself and it's equal to some number you can pull out of a calculator. Okay. Okay. That, that makes sense. Okay, the next one is, it's kind of similar to that one. It's e to the e power to the x power. Like that? Yep. Okay. Except there's no parentheses. You shouldn't put parentheses around it. I don't know if it matters or not. I don't think it does. Okay. Yeah, well, that's okay. Equals 5. Again, if we take natural log of both sides, automatic first step, regardless of what numbers are involved, doesn't matter. Just always, when you're solving an exponential equation, Take the natural log of both sides. Okay, now that e to the x comes down in front, natural log of e is 1 equals natural log of 5. So now I have e to the x equals natural log of 5. How do I solve that? Take the natural log of both sides again. You take the natural log of the natural log? Uh-huh. Remember, natural log is just a number. So you can take okay. the natural log of a natural log. This on the left goes to x. So x equals natural log of natural log of 5. Natural log oh, okay. of 5 is just a number, and then the natural log of that number. Okay. Huh. So the okay, thing just... you want to memorize here is that when you're solving any exponential equation, which is an equation where the variable's in the exponent, then you've got to keep taking the log of it, or the natural log of it, until you can get the exponent all by itself, until you can get the variable all by itself like that. Okay. These are good problems. They're challenging because... Can't say that I've seen that many where you have to do it multiple times. Usually you just have to do it once. Yeah. Okay. The next one is um, this one. I, I'm not sure if we did this one. I can't remember, but it's kind of hard. Okay. Uh, it point three times four to the two x power. equals point 0.2. All right. Here we have an exponential equation, but we can't really take the natural log of both sides until we get rid of that point 0.3. So okay. the very first thing we want to do is divide both sides by point 0.3. So now we have 4 to the 2x equals 2 thirds. Okay. Now I can take natural log of both sides, which allows me to bring the 2x down to the algebra line. So now I have the natural log of 4 equals the natural log of 2 thirds. And now x is going to be the natural log of 2 thirds divided by 2 times the natural log of 4. Okay. I think we did do this one. This looks a little familiar to me. Um, now, that's going to be a negative number, and that's why I, I kind of remember it, because the numerator is negative. When you take the log of a number between 0 and 1, you get a negative number. 
Okay. You take the log of a number greater than 1, you get a positive number. So the bottom is positive, the numerator is negative, or that's x is going to be negative. Okay. Not that we, in other words, not that that really affects anything. My answer is this. That's the most precise answer I can give. But if you did have to convert it to a decimal, expect it to be negative. It's a good thing to know that when you take the logs of numbers between 0 and 1, they're negative, And if you take the logs of numbers greater than 1, they're positive. OK. Remember, the graph looks like this. Virtually whatever log function you want to talk about, it looks like that. And there's your point yeah. 1 comma 0. So anything between 0 and 1 gives you a negative answer. Anything greater than 1 gives you a positive answer. OK. All right. All right. What else? Um, let's see. Next is, OK, this. Um, all right, this one's natural log of 4x plus 7 equals 4. Because this is a log equation, not an exponential equation, the way to solve it is to convert it to an exponential expression. Okay. You always do the opposite. In other words, if I have an exponential expression, I take the log of both sides. If I have a log equation, I convert it to exponential. Well, what's the exponential conversion of this? Um, e to the fourth equals 4x plus 7. Now that's just an algebraic equation to solve. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next one... Oh, they want us to reflect the graph and then draw like the reflection asymptotes. Okay. On some of these. Okay, that's fine. Tell me which ones. So, do that. This one is solve solve. Oh, I gotta find it. Sorry. Right. Ooh, let's see. Oh, here it is. Okay. So it wants to graph the function, then graph the inverse function, and then state the asymptotes. Okay. So the first one is y equals log base 2 of x plus 2 minus 3. Like that? Yep. And they want the inverse function and then graph the inverse function. Yeah, so they want the function, the inverse function, and then state the asymptotes. Okay. Well, how do you graph in, or how do you define inverse functions? You switch the variables and solve for y, correct? Yeah. So my first step would be x equal log base 2 of y plus 2 minus 3. Now I got to solve for y. Okay. So well, first thing I can do is add 3. Yeah. Now, this is a little tricky, but it's a pretty cool technique. And what's tricky is what I'm going to do next is take 2 to that power equaling 2 to that power. Okay, why would you that do that? You may not have ever taken before. It's called, I'm not sure exactly how to define this. It's where you, in other words, it's based on the fact that if I have x to the 4y equals x to the uh, y plus 1, well, then I, I can equate the exponents, right? Yeah. I could say 4y equals y plus 1. 
Well, what if I started with 4y equals y plus 1? Well, I could make a base of anything. I could say 2 to the 4y equals 2 to the y plus 1. I could say 6 to the 4y equals 6 to the y plus 1. Okay. Well, down here, I'm going to make the base 2. And the reason I am is because on the right side, 2 to the log base 2 of y plus 2 is equal to y plus 2. Okay. So I get the y on the algebra line. Over here, I still have 2 to the x plus 3. First of all, do you see why that reduces to y plus 2? Um, kind of. Because log 2, 2 to the log base 2 is equal to 1, right? Yeah, exactly. In other words, whenever you have b to the log base b of x, that's always equal to x. Yeah. And so that's why I made 2 be the base, is because we're dealing in log base 2. Okay. So I wanted to be able to have the right side of the equation equal y plus 2. Okay. Okay. I'm still not done. I still got to solve for y because that's the inverse. But now y is going to equal to this thing on the left. Minus 2. Minus 2. Okay. Okay. So that's y. And it says graph it. Okay. Well, what's my parent function? Um, y equals 2 to the x. Yeah. Y equals 2 to the x. This has two things going on. First of all, if I graphed y equal 2 to the x, it would look like this. Going through that point, 0, 1. Okay. What's different about our function from y equals 2 to the x? Um, it has a, or a horizontal shift left of 3 and a vertical shift down of 2. Yes. So this point right here, I'm going to move two unit, three units to the left and down 2. Okay. So... Okay. Right now, it's at 0, 1. Well, after I move it 3 units to the left, it becomes minus 3. And 2 units down becomes minus 1. Okay. So now, our function goes like that. And the black line, what's the horizontal asymptote on the black line? Um... Is it 2? 0. Oh, it's 0. Well, on the parent function is what I meant. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. And the horizontal asymptote on my red line, which has both of these transformations in it, is negative 2? Negative 2. Okay. And that's the only asymptote. There's no vertical asymptote. So really, when I start with a horizontal asymptote of my parent function as being y equals 0, the only thing that affects the asymptote is that. Okay. Even though I shift the curve left by 3 units, it does not affect the horizontal asymptote. Okay. Okay, but what about the original function, though? And what do they want? to know about the original function? Uh, they want you to graph them both, the inverse and the original. Okay. So the original, well, there's a couple of ways to graph the original. First of all, inverse functions are reflections about the line y equal x of the original function. So if I want to graph the original function, let me draw the line y equal x. And now reflect that red line about that 
green line. Okay. Okay, and I'll do that in blue. So the one thing. Okay. Looks like when you reflect it in blue, that it would look something like this. Okay. Now Whoa. that is going to have a vertical asymptote at X uh, minus 2. Yeah. In other words, wherever our, vert our horizontal asymptote was on the red line, that's going to turn into a vertical asymptote on the line that's reflected over the green line. Okay. Okay. Now, there is another way to graph that blue line rather than the way I just did it, and that's to go back to the original equation, which is this one, right? Yeah. Yeah. And graph it. Well, here, let's, let's start let me do that up here on the right. That's probably the better way to graph it. Okay. Well, okay. what's the parent function here? The parent function is log base 2. Uh, log base 2 of x. Right. And that has a horizontal shift to the left of minus 2 and a vertical shift down of 3. So yeah. this point here, which on the original function is 1 comma 0, after my shift goes to here, okay, and it becomes minus 1 comma minus 3. So the other function graphs like that, in other words, the Original function is this blue line on the left. Sorry, I should have used a different color. Let me use That's okay. No worries. That's how you graph the original function, and that should look something like what I got. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. When I graphed it merely as the reflection of our inverse, I get this blue line. Well, that's the blue line that I get when I graph it straight out the original function, as a transformation of log base 2 of x. Okay. Okay. It is perhaps not obvious, but I'm going to point it out that if I have y equal natural log of x, the inverse of that is x equal natural log of y, and now I take E to both sides, and what do you get? You get Y equals E to the X. So that is the inverse of that. Okay. Y equal natural log of X is the inverse of Y equal E to the X. And how would that graph? Well, in one case, there's Y equal E to the X. In the other case, here's y equal natural log of x, and you can see that 1 is a reflection about that line y equal x. Okay. Okay. Now, that's, this can be dangerous to know because it's very easy to get confused. In other words, I said that the inverse of y equal natural log of x is y equal e to the x, which is a true statement. But if I want the equivalent expression here, it's e to the y equals x. Okay. So that's the same thing as y equal natural log of x. Okay y equal e to the x is the inverse. E to the, okay. These two are inverses of one another. These two are the same. Notice 
the difference. The yeah. Y equal E to the X. This is X equal E to the Y. Okay. For years with logs, I was always confused about that. Um, because it's, in other words, you always want to know what the equivalent uh, exponential expression is. But okay. it's also not obvious when you're converting to exponential expressions that these two things are inverses of one another. Yeah. But they are. Because that's because you have to switch the X and Y around. And yeah, that's exactly. If I switch the X and Y around, then I get uh, E to the X equals Y. Yeah. Okay. But you still have to use that little trick. In other words, notice that when I did switch them around, okay, I just switched the variables there. The yeah. only way to solve for y, and this is kind of a calculus trick also, when I get to this point right here, yeah, the only way to solve for y is to have e as a base. In other words, I'm going to say e to the x equals e to the natural log of y. Oh, okay. And then e to the natural log of y equals y. Okay. Okay. So it's, if I said x equals y, then that means 3 to the x equals 3 to the y. Or it means okay. z to the x equals z to the y. In other words, I can drop any base I want under there. Okay. It's okay. I think I get that now. It's an interesting trick that you don't really learn until you get to logs. And then you'd be yeah. amazed at how often you need to use it. When you get to calculus, you need to use that little trick a lot. Well, okay. Whenever you have an equation that is of this nature, where I've got x equals natural log of y, and I want to solve for y, that's the only way to do it. Okay is to make E the base. All right. Okay, I understand that. Okay. Got time for maybe okay. one more. I don't want to be late for okay. 6 o'clock. God, I feel horrible that I fell asleep on my 4.30. Oh. Okay, for this one, I just want to know the inverse of this function. We don't have to graph it or anything. Okay. I'm just kind of confused on it. Um, y equals... 1 half x minus 1, or y equals, sorry, y equals 1 half to the power of x minus 1. Okay. Uh, plus 2. Like that? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> First set, step is to switch the variables. And then solve for y. Okay. <laughs> well, now I got to isolate everything. So first of all, let's bring this plus two on the other side. Okay. Now, what base can I use? Um. Oh, well, hold on. Do we need a base? Yeah, we do. Um. In other words. I want to take one-half to that power. Okay. Hold on. Let me think for a moment here. No, I don't. I don't need that. I don't need that trick on this one. On this one, all I have to do is take the natural log of both sides. In other words, I get natural log of x minus 2 equals y minus 1 times the natural log of 1 half. Um, okay. See what I did? Yeah, you moved the y minus 1 in front. Yeah, so now to solve for y is relatively easy at this point. I'm going to divide both sides by natural log of 1 half. Gets rid of that, and then I'm going to add 1 gets rid of that. So okay. Y equals this expression over here. 
Okay. And that's the end. Okay. Okay. Inverse cool. is always real simple. Switch the variables and solve for y. What isn't always that simple is solving for y, but in this case, relatively straightforward. Okay. 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 Uh, Nick, I will talk to you next time. Okay. See you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.